Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at some script that I made that allows you to basically spawn structures on the ground and it fixes basically the floating trees and floating structures and stuff like stuff like that. So uh, what I'm going to be doing today is basically walking you through the script and as you can see all these trees, um, pretty much all the foliage here is run with this script even down to the flowers themselves. So even these flowers, the tall grass, all those are basically run through this one script. Uh, the bushes are, the trees, um, some other features as well, like the pumpkins and stuff like that. Even these um, gravel patches are th run through the script, but that's a completely different thing that I'll cover in another video. Um, right, so what basically creates the script is a little bit more complicated to explain, but I've set it up in such a way that it requires very minimum configuration. Uh, if we go into mCreator, I'll show you the procedure. go to the procedure. Now there's two procedures. There's this one right here. Uh, this one is more designed for larger structures like huts and stuff like that. If we go back to Minecraft, uh, we might be able to find one of those around here. Here's one right here. So basically the larger one basically um, tests for a certain flat area and then if it can place it within a three block level. So between uh, this level, that level, and that level, then what it's going to do is basically spawn in the structure. Uh, it tests for three different layers, obviously, when it goes to place it. Now, if it didn't, then it would be a lot more rare than uh, what it could place. But if it's on a three level part, then if it goes a little bit over, it's fine. Uh, it's just um, going to make sure that there's at least it, it's still flush with that particular ground level. If I could find a building around here that's uh, mostly on higher terrain, I can probably demonstrate to you the way the script works. Um, it's just a little bit hard to find them because they are the, the terrain here is a little bit uh, more flat. So we'll check out this one, see if there's a hill here. You can kind of see though that the um, it kind of cuts out just a little bit of the ground just so it can place it and that's basically what it does with that it will fill in the bottom parts if there isn't enough room and it, there's an option to turn it to dirt as well so I'm not seeing there might be a house over there that we can check out and we'll see it looks like it might be on a hill so we might be able to get lucky with that let's go in here Okay, so you can kind of see it going over the grass a little bit. That's basically what it does, but there's times where it looks like there's a two block gap where it's like this, and basically it's still flat. Uh, it's just it's a little bit more steep on one end, and I'm not, I don't think it's, I'm going to get lucky actually showing you an example of that. It's really rare, so um, we'll just move on to the procedure itself. Alright, so the first thing that we're actually testing for in these procedures, now both procedures have the same settings up here. Um, the script is a little bit different in this part. The, uh, the tree one only requires one level to test for, where the structures require a little bit more um, stuff to work with. Now there's two different versions of how the script works. The first one is with tag support, and then the other one is without tag support. Um, Enable soil replacement. This is a setting that you can enable or disable depending on what you want. Uh, for larger structures that require a more flat area, it's probably recommended to set this to enabled, so true. So you can basically fill it in with your under soil block here. Um, the tag support does exactly what it does or says it just allows for tag support It will run this script instead of the specific block script down below 
and um, it will also test for your topsoil block for your tag rather than the uh, topsoil block item I believe so this part is the same it's still going to replace it with your topsoil block uh, if you use tag support so it's still this still needs to be filled out but uh, if you're using replaced soil then then you have to fill out this and if you're using tags and you have to fill out the IDs here there's three different types of soil for or three different types of blocks there is the topsoil which is things like your grass uh, not tall grass that would be more under air blocks uh, there's your grass blocks there's um, things that would be like mycelium uh, puzzle stuff like that those are your top layer soil and then your undersoil would be your dirt um, any other blocks that you might have mixed in with that and your air blocks is your basically the um, things that are found on above the grass or the topsoil layer which is like mostly air but if you're using um, the tags you can specify tall grass flowers and increase the yield of your spawn that way as well so uh, in most cases you probably want to use tag support and if you do then just make sure to enable the tag support and fill out your tag um, names which are basically just these things right at the end of the tag now these should be set up for block I'll cover the tags in just a second so another thing that you'll have to do is fill out your a default fallback thing for your topsoil undersoil and air soil like I said before the undersoil will basically allow you to replace it and it's used in some script even with tag support so in our case it basically replaces it with the undersoil block here so that's for if we have enable soil replacement uh, the other thing down here is the position offset this I'll get into in a second the structure size is basically the size of the structure on the X how far how big the structure is X direction and Z direction and everything below that so position X position Z position X2 and do not spawn structure should not be edited these uh, four blocks right here should be left alone uh, those are just configured through the structure or the script itself after uh, so basically everything above the structure size you can edit and set to your liking Now back to the position offset X. Uh, this actually controls where the uh, test location is performed. Now by default, if it's set to zero, then what it's going to do is uh, start at the, let's see if I can remember the access point, the uh, north west bottom uh, position of your structure. And then it will basically uh, can be offset in positive, so southeast and up. But we only have X and Z locations, so we're only going to be offsetting it the south and east direction. So if you wanted, if you have like a five by five structure, and then you were to want to move it into test for a three by three in the inner circle of that, then what you would do is you would set this to um, you would set this to one and you would set that to one and that will shift the access point in one block and then you would basically configure your settings here for that so if it's a five by five structure and you want to test for the inner part it would be three by three and that would test for that part of the structure I have example of that actually in the PDF file that I created for explaining this believe it's under this one right here so basically again like I said 
uh, what it's doing is the access point is located at the um, northwest corner and then what you want to do is the offset which is the purple part is going to take that uh, access point and move it inwards one so this is the exact same thing that we basically did and then the structure size is going to be this area right here so that's basically how that works um, again I explained pretty much every block in detail in this PDF so you guys can read that over I'll make sure to include that into the actual download for the procedure itself but um, there's a few other aspects of this script that will be needed to be set up so there's that one and then there's the other one which is for the trees and stuff again the only major difference is I'm only testing for one specific location and not multi-level. This ensures that the blocks are um, not going to uh, get replaced if there is a level and turn to dirt. So it makes it look a little more prettier for trees and foliage. So that's the tree one. Uh, this is the larger structure one for like things like houses and stuff like that. Uh, the other thing that we need to do is a few things in the structure uh, script itself. Uh, we need to select our structure and it does not support structure rotation. So make sure this is disabled and you will need your height offset all set to zero as well. It's also recommended to set your grass, uh, your restrict to block types to your basically your tag blocks uh, for your topsoil or uh, like say for example where you're using a grass block for your biome then you want to set it to the grass block here and then for the part right here for the additional conditions this is where you're basically running the script from you're actually going to call the procedure now these are separate procedures uh, run from its own script and at the bottom of it there is a return true and return false now what those are going to do is basically what we can do is go into the additional conditions generation condition this procedure right here and then what we're going to do is we're going to call and get the return value and then we're going to test if it's true and if it is true then we're going to basically spawn the structure so if that's true, then we'll spawn the structure. If not, then we will not spawn the structure. Um, another thing that you should probably know is to get that block, all you need to do is go under advanced, um, the advanced tab, and then there's call procedure and get return value right here. You're going to have to select your procedure condition from the drop down list. So that's basically how you set up your additional conditions. Uh, there is not too much other things to explain here. Uh, it does only support ground support, so that's the only thing that really needs to be used for. And the first motion block is what I've been basing the structure on, so it's best to use that. Um, everything else you can basically configure. You, configure. you can configure this, you can configure that. You can set the amount of probability for the structure and so on. So that's that part. Now we should probably go into the, uh, what, what are we going into? We want to go into the game again. And I'm going to just pop out of this one because there is something that I need to show for the structures themselves as it's an important part in creating the structure. So if we go into single player and then I'll go into my build world for this particular mod and we'll take a look at how I have these structures set up. So there needs to be a certain foundation part for the structures. I have them kind of set up over here. Uh, as you can see, the floor of this particular structure is like this. So structures that are larger, like buildings and stuff like that, would have your kind of foundation where you have your flooring and stuff like that. And uh, for the trees, very similar method. 
Uh, there is a little bit changes with this that you will need to do. You'll still have to use the structure voids in this level right here and all the way to the top part. So all the air blocks will need to be turned to structure voids that aren't um, basically the blocks that you want. So make sure that the foundation, if you have vines and stuff like that, that is just dirt. So it doesn't need to change the block below to um, any, any dirt under soil texture. This will improve the performance for basically update ticks and stuff like that as well. If it's already updated to the uh, dirt text, dirt block, then it won't need to do that when it's actually loaded into the world. Uh, to fill in the structures for, for this, uh, what you need to do is kind of build out an area. Uh, we're going to go up to here, then we're going to go fill, and then we're going to hit tab three times and get the coordinates. We're going to go control A to copy it and then control C to actually copy it. And then what we're going to do is go to the opposite corner and then we're going to hit tab three more times and then we're going to copy that again. And to copy it, you just hit control or to select it all, all you need to do is control A and then to uh, copy it is control C. Uh, to paste it, you go control V and then you can basically fill that in. So what we want to do is actually fill it with structure voids. So what I'm going to do is go structure and then void should come up. What this will do is it will give other blocks priority where the structure voids are. And then what we want to do is go replace and then we're going to replace air. And if the vines have not grown, then it should be all set up. After which you just want to basically save your structure. I have it set to that because that's the structure I'm using. Um, another thing is if you want block like structure rotation, you're going to have to do that all manually. Um, the reason for this is because the axis point for when you use a random rotations, it actually changes from the this corner and it will rotate the axis point with the structure. So it'll be on different corners for every rotation, which kind of makes the script uh, not work properly. So it's important to basically build your rotations for your structures like I've done here and just give them a different name and then import them into your world and then basically set them up as different structures and it should work fine. So basically that's what goes on there. Um, and as you can see all these um, parts right here are all the different structures I've used for the script. So the bushes, the tree, and the houses I've all used right here. So let's just quickly go into one more thing. I said that we were going to look at the tags and we'll do that right now. All right, so we have a few different tags here. These are for the structures. Uh, there's different ones. This one is for the grass block that I have. Um, now, how tags basically works is the namespace is going to be your first part of your tag. Um, assuming that you've used tags before, you could probably just skip this. But um, the you'd have a forge, colon, and then your part there, if it's a uh, your mod, then it would be your mod ID, and then or your mod namespace, which is like, uh, for example, I'm using TAC Mining World, so that would be my actual first part colon, and then the tag name, which is up here. Uh, the tags also have to be blocks, and they have to be set up for the blocks that you want. So that one's for to the top layer. This one is for the under soil. And this one is for the air block. So what I've done with the air block is I've basically set the air. I've set sugarcane, dead bushes, all the different types of foliage that you would probably find in the biome itself. So all the flowers as well and um, pumpkins, stuff like that are all in here as well for that it will basically test if the block is above. And then what I can do is basically just go and test for that in the actual script uh, rather when I use tag support and then it will have a higher chance of probability to actually spawn the structure. So that's basically how it works. Again, I will include the 
actual in-depth PDF which explains the blocks, the uses of them, and how to configure them. Um, it goes really in-depth. I spent like a couple hours working on this PDF so you guys could basically see it. And the final note uh, also has the page where you'll be able to download the script. Right now it's not set up, but after this video goes public it will be. So hopefully you guys found today's tutorial useful. If you want to use a script, again, I will link to the um, actual page down in the description of the video. So definitely check that out if you want the script itself. Um, outside of that, thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.